So I'm here with Allison Toziat. She's the winemaker at Colgan, and we're on the number nine estate, named for the ninth parcel that was uh, planted back in 1998. And how do we know it's a rocky site? Well, we know it's a rocky site <laughs> because uh, we can see the rock outcrop on the surface here. And that's the kind of stuff you actually <laughs> pulled out when you when you were planting back then. Right. We're, um, we're at a higher elevation, so we're at this rock outcrop at the peak uh, at the peak here. And uh, the soil here is actually created from the weathering of these very large rocks. Okay. And that surface of those rocks breaks down, has broken down over time to create um, clay, which is finer. Let's take a look uh, at it. Mixed with, the, mixed with the larger rocks. And, and so... And you're, you're tilling every other row here because? Uh, because tilling brings energy to the vines and uh, helps them get back what they lost in the previous growing season and then the other row which has a grass on it helps us to uh, control any spring rains that we might have and reduce vigor that might have might come from getting extra rain in the springtime so show me the soil a little bit up close so soil you can see well we're, it's nicely dried out now but um, this dark reddish clay uh, is what is going, this is a weathered material. This is what's going to hold moisture and be able to give back uh, in the summertime. Uh, but but, in, rocky essence, too, so but in essence, you've got this, right. uh, really the, the most important part is all these great size rocks that are uh, key to drainage in the springtime when the vines are beginning to grow. And they're going to limit the amount of vigor that the vine has, which helps us get the right balance and create fruit that has uh, just the right intensity of flavor and freshness that we're looking for. And then the ripening up here is, you said it comes pretty quick at the end of the season. Yeah, what's interesting about this site being at a higher elevation and these really well draining soils is uh, the maturation of the fruit happens a little bit faster at the end of the season. And the beauty of that is like we arrive with this really big crescendo of flavor and uh, what I found though is really important to taste the fruit very often and make sure that it has really great integrity uh, so that we can always pick it at its, at its peak. So we're getting that really great expression in the wines. Elevation here is? We're about 1350 up here. But you got another site on the other side of the valley called Tixon Hill and that elevation is? It's about 350 to 400 feet. It's kind of like a foot slope. Okay, so we're gonna go over there and check it out and see the differences. Yeah. Okay. Took a 20 minute drive down from the number nine estate. We're in the Tixon Hill uh, vineyard that you have here. And we're on the other side of the valley and we've got some big differences. So let's start talking about first uh, the soil type. The soil type here is a uh, very stony loam. It's also volcanic, but um, it's a little more gravelly and uh, deeper, but also very well draining. Um, what's interesting here is that uh, the maturation and the way the fruit ripens on the vine is a very different dynamic than at the Nine Estate. Up in the Nine, nine Estate, um, there's a very tighter diurnal shift. So during the day, it doesn't quite get as hot, but at night, the warmth from the valley kind of comes up. So the temperatures go up and down, and it's, it's a close band of temperature. Cooler overall, but tighter band. Exactly. And then over here? And over here at Tixon Hill, it might get hotter in the afternoon, but it will get much colder at night. So we're in a point of the valley, of Napa Valley, where uh, it's one of the narrowest, and at nighttime, the cold air will sink very quickly to this site, uh, and temperatures will drop by four o'clock, five o'clock, uh, very rapidly. And what happens with the fruit, it's like a resetting uh, at night, where uh, the temperature goes down moisture is recaptured into the fruit and it's refreshed and it helps extend uh, the amount of time that the fruit can ripen but still retain all of its freshness and flavors and the effect on the texture of that wine is is um, tannin that is a little more suave and a little more polished because it's had longer to ripen and we're between two mountains we got spring mountain which is where spring mountain to there. our south and, and diamond mountain, diamond mountain. To our north. So yeah, so we're in like a little comb here that, as you said, it's like a little bowl and the, the cold air just sinks kind in here sinks and sits in, a in for a longer time. a pocket time. off of the Mayakamas Mountains. And let's look at that soil. So we've got so, something different here. So these rocks here are a little bit smoother uh, because it's a little more of a, res it's more of a residual soil. So uh, uh, the w rocks have smoothed out. we got a little bit of city in, which yeah. is interesting. 
um, off of Diamond right. Mountain, um, and a little bit of cobble there. And this is Tyson Hill, and the this uh, vineyard was planted in. Tyson Hill was planted in 1997. But that was a, essentially a replanting after a long break. The original plantings were way back when. Yeah, Josephine Tixon purchased this part of um, a property off of Charles Krug in 1881. And he had planted it back in 1860. And he planted it in the 1860s. So uh, what, what was uh, so phenomenal about this property was that the, the history it came with are, already had some really great wines from the 1880s. They were doing different grapes. Some different grapes, some <laughs> Zinfandel likely. <Yep. laughs> and of course, uh, not the modern uh, viticulture that we are accustomed to. Back then it was more head-trained vines. So it's a new history at Tixon Hill. A new history at Tixon Hill.